And we'll begin reading in verse 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and verse 12. And I titled the message this evening, God's Living Sacrifice. God's Living Sacrifice. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning at verse number 12, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats, but God should destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body, for two saith he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. I'm also going to read from a passage in Romans chapter 12. The Bible says in Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. This evening, as we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we realize a very important truth. The Bible says we are not our own. We are bought with a price. If you accepted Christ, then you belong to Christ. And that means that your life is no longer yours. And that means our life now belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave his life for us. What is it that we have given to him? We have sung about that this evening. Christ has done a lot for us and he has purchased our redemption through his blood. He came to this earth. He came here so that we could have everlasting life. Simply put, when it comes to living the Christian life, we need to live as a, a living sacrifice. Simply put, we need to understand that because of what Christ has done for us, that is our reasonable service. It is giving our life to do what God wants us to do. Doing as we are told needs to be done over free will. God never will force anyone to do anything. He'll encourage you and he'll tell you what we need to do. But we ought to do what God tells us to do because that is what is best for us. God has his best interest at heart. Sometimes we think if we're going to be a living sacrifice, we think of sacrifice as something that is negative, but it is not. It is a positive thing. When we give our lives over to the Lord Jesus Christ and we stop living for ourselves, we truly begin to live. We truly begin to enjoy life as we ought to because we understand who it is that saved us, what he did for us, and what we're doing is worth it all when we do it for the Lord Jesus Christ. Doing as we're told should become simple because of what God has given to us. The question that comes to how we will perform a reasonable service, how we're going to live as a living sacrifice, how is that going to happen? First, we need to realize, if you're taking notes this evening, that you are not your own. You are not your own. We are a child of the king. 
We are children of the Most High. We were purchased. The Bible says, and I'll read it again, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We're not only saved by the blood, but we have been bought by the blood to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. And what I mean by that is when you're saved, you're not saved so you can live the, the way you want to. You're saved and then you, we are to live the way God wants us to. We're to live for him. And so in order for us to glorify God in our bodies, we need to understand that Christ made a, a huge sacrifice. He did all that he could do so that you and I could live forever. God's word tells us that the moment from sal- at the moment of salvation, we went from belonging to the devil, the God of this world, being children of the devil, to be children of God. At that moment, we were changed. In the moment we trusted in Christ, we became new creatures. As his children, we need to obey right away each and every day. The Bible says the following in 1 Corinthians 7. Turn there if you would. 1 Corinthians 7, and we'll begin reading in verse 17. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 17. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 17, But as God hath distributed it to every man, as the Lord hath called everyone, so let him walk, and so ordain I in all churches. Is any called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised is any called in uncircumcision let him not be circumcised circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing but the keeping of the commandments of god let every man abideth in the same calling wherein he is called and thou called being a servant care not for it but if thou mayest be made free use it rather for he that is for he that is called in the lord being a servant is the Lord free man. Likewise, also, he that is called being free is Christ's servants. Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called there abide with God. The Bible says we are bought with a price. Be not the servants of men. Christ has made it very clear that purchase of our redemption is a very valuable thing and that value is important because of what Christ has done for us we are not to serve men we are to remember who it is that we serve we serve the Lord Jesus Christ and we serve him because of what he has done for us we serve God where we at because we are Christ's servant the reason why I do what I do as a Christian is because what Christ has done for me. I wouldn't have a home in heaven. I would have no hope on this earth. I would never know the joy of sins forgiven if it weren't for the Lord Jesus Christ. I would never know true love. I would never know life abundantly if it weren't for the gift of God in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1, verse 18, For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as a a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing that if ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. God pictures here that our redemption is not of Redemption of corruptible things as with silver and gold, but it's much more precious than that. You can take all the things of this world, the Bible says, and you can offer it to God, and it would mean nothing. 
Our soul is more valuable than all the things of this world. And the only thing that was great enough and is of enough value to purchase our redemption was the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his blood, it is by his stripes, it is by what Jesus did for us that we have been purchased, we have been bought. And so when I say we're not our own, I just want us to simply understand we are not our own because of what Christ has d- done for us and is of great value. Not only do we see that we're not our own, but because we are not our own, we must understand the importance of obedience. The importance of of obedience. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6.20, For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The Bible says when we receive the free gift of salvation, when he purchased us, when we received him, we have to understand the simple truth, we are God's. Our lives Even before we knew the Lord Jesus Christ, we were created for a purpose, and that was to glorify God. But that was never possible until we trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. But now, when we have received Christ, now we have trusted in him, we are to do something about it. We are not to take our lives for granted as Christians. We are to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to be different. We're no longer to live like the men of this world. We are no longer to be that natural man. We are to be people who reflect the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. The Bible says the following in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. It says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. The Bible has given us instruction to be kind one to another. This is speaking within the church family. When we're interacting with each other, we should be kind, tender-hearted, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And one of the reasons why this is so important to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and to live differently, because Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you love one another. When we live in such a way that exemplifies the Lord Jesus Christ in our life, we're we're quick to forgive, we're tenderhearted, we don't hold grudges against others. When we're willing to look past their sins, the Bible says love cover." A multitude of sins when we're willing to live that way we're living like the Lord Jesus Christ and when people see us living like the Lord Jesus Christ they want to know our Lord Jesus Christ it'll encourage them to be different and want to be different to know the God that we serve we should be hospitable one to another taking care of each other as a family That is what God looks at the church as. He looks at it as being a family. We're going to treat each person who God has placed in our lives like family. These are not options. These are being reasonable service. God looks at our life. He wants us to do our reasonable service. He wants us to be different. We are saved now. and We no longer are to serve the God of this world. We're no longer to serve our own sinful desires. We are to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn your Bibles to the book of John. John chapter 13. John chapter 13. We'll begin reading in verse 33. John chapter 13. And we'll look at verse 33. John chapter 13 and verse 33. The Bible says the following. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said to the Jews, whether I go, you cannot come. And so so now I say to you, a new commandment I give to you, that ye love one another. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. This entails love, entails a lot. Entails taking care of each other, protecting each other. Entails 
being different for the Lord Jesus Christ. To follow Jesus in true worship and to follow him as the way we ought to means that we need to look at our lives as not our own, but belonging to Jesus. And because we belong to Jesus, we live differently. Turn your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And we'll begin reading in verse number 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 in verse number 1. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus... That as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner, because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. But as touching Touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed ye do toward all the brethren which are also in Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you. That ye walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. Living the Christian life is following the instructions that God has given us in his word. When we realize what he has done for us, he's purchased us. We live differently by giving our lives to him to live for him. We need to realize, first of all, that we're not our own. And then, secondly, that we are to obey him because of what he has done for us. But thirdly, and I'll be done, the result of Understanding the importance of being God's living sacrifice is a blessed life. When we give our lives to the one who saved us and we live for him, we gain our lives. We have life and life more abundantly. We experience what it means to have true life. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Our reward of being a loving Christian who lives like the Lord Jesus Christ is that it will impact people around us. You'll impact your brothers and sisters for the Lord Jesus Christ to be different. When you give your life to him and you submit to him and you follow him, your faithfulness will not go unnoticed. People will take notice and you will be an encouragement. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6 verse 37, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together. And running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. God's word is teaching us the principle, we reap what we sow. And when we sow to the flesh, we live for ourselves, we reap corruption. But when we sow to the Spirit, we live according to the Word of God, we live the way God wants us to, we reap life everlasting. And one of those ways that happens, the way we have a better life, is the Bible says when we give, the men give unto us. They take care of us. They, they notice and they will bless our lives when we're a blessing 
to others. Not only do people take notice, but more importantly than people taking notice, Jesus takes notice, and your life will be blessed. We, we're not in the business of being taking notice of men so we can receive benefits for ourselves, but we ought to be in the business of living like the Lord Jesus Christ so that God takes notice, so that we're pleasing to God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 40, He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of the prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give drink to, unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water, only in the name of the disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall no wise lose his reward. When we think about the Christian life, we're saved from sin, we're saved from the punishment, we're saved from the wrath to come. We're encouraged to live like the Lord Jesus Christ and be different. And really, that's all it really needs to be. We, we don't deserve eternal life because of our sin, because of what we have done. All God should really expect from us after he saved us is just to do as we're told and be done with it. But God gives more grace. He says, when I saved you and you trusted me and you follow me, not only do you have eternal life, but you're going to be rewarded for it. You get to lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. And I believe when we get there, we'll be able to lay those treasures at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ and thank him for all that he had, has done for us. But we have to remember about the Christian life, being the living sacrifice, that being a living sacrifice, God's living sacrifice, it's not something we're going to look at and think to ourselves, this is going to be a hard thing. And what I mean by that, I'm not saying the Christian life is easy. Don't get me wrong. It takes discipline. It takes effort. It takes desire. It takes diligence. But I want you to understand, when we get to heaven, we get to say, it was worth it all. It, we look at the here and now, we look at the difficulties of the here and now, but when we're willing to be a living sacrifice and do as we ought to, because of what Christ has done for us, we'll get to look back when we follow him, we trust him, and we do all that we're supposed to because of his love. We're going to be able to look back and see all that he did in our lives. And we're going to see all the rewards that he gave to us. And yes, there was difficulties. But we're going to look at it and see that it was worth it all to be the living sacrifice that God wanted us to be. We're not our own. We should live for the Lord Jesus Christ because of that. This is our reasonable service. The question is, are you doing your reasonable service? I want to be encouraging to you, then understand, we all need to pray for each other that we do our reasonable service. It's a daily battle. But God is there to give us strength each and every day. We go to him in prayer. He'll help us each and every day by step by step. We're not alone. We have brothers and sisters in Christ who we can go to. We can pray for each other. We have... Lord willing, some of us were blessed with families. We can go to our families, but we also have a church family. Don't ever forget that. Sometimes we think that we're alone where we're at and what we're going through, but we're never alone with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's a very important truth as well. Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I'll be with you to the utmost end, right to the end of the world. God is always going to be there. God wants us to be a living sacrifice, and God will enable us to do so. We just have to trust in him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father.